Now that's all about the um, electrolytes imbalances. Hope you all have understood. We have seen about sodium, potassium, uh, magnesium, calcium and phosphate. Okay. So main uh, electrolytes which has to be present in the uh, serum have been dealt. Anything which goes less is hypo, anything which goes in increase is hyper. And we have seen what are the causes, signs and symptoms and how to manage as a nurse. Very, not very detailly, but to the, up to the mark, uh, why, how the first year student has to have a knowledge has been imposed on you. Hope you all have understood. The final topic is in fluid and electrolyte imbalances is we have to add up with the acid base balance also. So in the initial slides of fluid and electrolyte balance, I have told you how the acid and base even uh, base are balanced in the human body. So start up with that. Uh, we'll see a little points of how the acid and base getting balanced and then we will reach on to the imbalances and see the rest of the things what is happening. Uh, the here, when we are coming to see what is acid base balance, an important property of the blood is it's its degree of acidity and alkalinity. So we call that as pH value. You might have heard about pH value. To say that the blood is acidic or to say that the blood is alkaline, the degree of the blood uh, property is so important. Okay. So for that blood acidity or alkalinity, we must have acid and bases which will be present in the blood. And those compounds increasing, decreasing will tell you whether the blood is alkaline or the blood is al acidity. So when the blood acidity increases, when it increases, when the level of acidic compounds rises or the level of basic or alkaline compounds gets fall. So if you wanted to say the blood is acidic, acidic compounds in the blood has to be increased and basic components we call that as alkaline compounds has to be decreased. Then we can say blood is acidity. When you will say the opposite, that is when you say blood is alkaline, when the alkaline compounds are increased and the acidic components are less. So this is like we wanted to see how the acid and base ki balance has to be taken place. And the another important thing is that should not be too acidic and that should not be too alkaline. It has to be maintained in the neutral format. So the body uses again different methods to control this acid base balance. What is the mechanism which is used to control the fluid and electrolyte balance which is called as homeostasis. Okay. But here in acid base balances, it can be also called as some, there are some mechanisms which is be happening and the main organs which has been doing this is called as lung and kidney and this is called as buffer systems. Okay, buffer systems can usually help in to maintain the acid base balance. Uh, very shortly, I wanted to tell you about all these organs, what especially they are doing and how to maintain about the acid and base balance. Okay, so here I have put up in two uh, tableau columns so that you can uh, compare with the fluid and electrolyte balances of these particular lungs, how it is doing and with the acid and base balance. You can see here the lungs, how it maintains the fluid and electro electrolyte balances, uh, insensible loss of water from the lungs will be maintaining. For example, when you are exhaling, 300 ml of water is lost and also through vaporization, uh, 900 ml of water is lost, thereby fluid and electrolyte has been maintained, okay. Whereas in acid base balance, what is the main function of the lungs in acid base balance is, this will be releasing carbon dioxide from the lungs. Everybody knows, we inhale oxygen and carbon dioxide from the cells which has been produced as a waste product from the cells will carry through the blood and it will reach the lungs and lungs will exhale the carbon dioxide outside. Okay, so you can see here carbohydrate uh, or is a mildly acidic thing which has been a waste product of oxygen. When, uh, when you take inside oxygen, carbon dioxide is being formed and that will be mildly acidic which is waste from the cells which will be carried to the blood and then it will reach the lungs and from where it is excreted through exhale. So when uh, this is carbohydrate carbon dioxide okay when the carbon dioxide is in the blood the ph of the blood volume uh, will be increasing so as i told you carbohydrate which is present in the carbon dioxide is then acidic so if it is more in the blood the blood will be creating acidity this is a normal thing 
so once it has been excreted then it becomes uh, alkaline and continuously it comes on like that so acidity will be increasing and the ph value will be maintained so the brain controls the speed how when the carbon dioxide is increased in the blood um, the brain will get the news okay carbon dioxide is too much now so the blood acidity is increasing but it should not be increased we have to maintain it properly so what the brain is giving telling the lungs to take the carbon dioxide faster and to put as exhale so once the lungs get the message from the brain lungs will deep ex uh, deeply it will exhale like it will push out very fastly the carbon dioxide through regulation of the exhale and there to maintain the ph value hope you are getting my point carbon dioxide is a waste product which is getting from the oxygen inhalation and this carbon dioxide is slightly acidic which is present in the blood when this is increasing in the blood blood acidity increases so it will give information to the brain and brain will give information to the lungs so the deeper exhalation happens and thereby carbon dioxide is exhaled outside and acid base balance will be maintained and the next organ i told you which will be helping in the acid base balance is kidneys again here i have been shuffled into two like fluid and electrolyte balance and acid base balance fluid and electrolyte balance we all know uh, it helps in filtering the extra cellular fluid compartment in the glomeruli and it will be with the help of the anti diuretic hormone aldosterone so all these will be uh, helping in the excretion and reabsorption of certain things like water and sodium reabsorption and other products like potassium phosphate and all will be excreted uh, from the tubules with the help of the and adh hormone and aldosterone hormones okay and excretion and reabsorption which is been done by the kidney will help the fluid and electrolyte get imbalanced so there will be selective retention for some things and selective secretion for something uh, like fluid it's uh, it can be a fluid or it can be a substance but it will be helpful uh, but kidney is helping for that and when they are excreting metabolic waste and toxic substances again they are maintaining the fluid and electrolyte balance but when it was coming to the acid base balance what exactly does this kidney do kidney will be regulating the uh, extra cellular compartment fluid ph value by retention of hydrogen ions so hydrogen ions you can see this is hydrogen ions they will be inside the extra cellular fluid and kidney is helping the retention of hydrogen ions in the glomeruli and helps in reabsorption and sends back into the extra cellular fluid and thereby what happens it will be maintaining the acids and uh, balanced state again blood ph has to be maintained by excreting acids and bases which will be taking place by the kidneys and also something which will be happening by the lungs also so lungs will be the most important one and kidney will be excreting very slowly but lungs will be doing with deep uh, deep exhalation most of the acidic content will be excreted outside whereas kidney will be doing this function very slowly of excreting the acid and base balance and the next important system is buffer system buffer system already we know what is buffer system when something is more uh, two compartments are there in, uh, intracellular and extracellular one area it is more of cations and one area less of cation so what i have what is happening is this buffer system in the middle will help to send uh, the uh, cations which is lesser here and that will make the both the areas equal okay so that is called as buffer for example let me tell you one thing two persons are fighting and two are very aggressive but a neutral person has to be in the middle to stop the fighting and to come into an peaceful environment so that center person is acting as the buffer because they will be stand in 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 the middle and they will be making equalizing of both the areas so actually this buffer system also does that only the buffer system got the sudden shift of acidity and alkalinity both of the areas if acidic means both of them has to be acidic if alkalinity means both of them has to be alkalinity suddenly it should not become acidic or suddenly it should not become alkalinity so that guarding will be taken place by the buffer so if any place any compartment is suddenly become acidity so this buffer will send some of the bases to that area and make the acid to get into neutral and if here the alkalinity is going so they will send alkalinity is increasing 
some of the acids will be sent to the nearby compartment to make the alkalinity into acidic that is in the neutral form so they both will join together this is the help of the buffer system so it will be done by using weak acids and weak bases so strong acids will make acidity strong bases will make alkalinity so if uh, alkalinity is more or acidity is more this buffer system by send its own weaker acids to make the alkalinity uh, to the acidic whereas uh, weak bases will be sent to the acidic area where it has to be neutralized okay so this is how the normal ph will be used um, to pair by sending in a pair of weak and strong acid and weak and strong bases so buffer system work chemically by adjusting the proportion of the acid and bases that is what i explained you now both the proportion has to be equal with the strong and as a uh, weak acid strong and weak bases bases uh, bases and that's why they can maintain the acid base balance in the area and here for some example carbonic acid is a weak acid which is coming from the carbon dioxide and bicarbonate or bicarbonate are the weak bases okay so carbonic acid and bicarbonates must be acting as a buffer system to make acidity and to make alkalinity in a neutral state now coming to the acid base imbalances what happens when there is a problem in maintaining this acid base balances when lungs fails when kidney fails when this buffer system fails acid base imbalances will be happening imbalances means anything higher or anything lesser so acidity can be uh, increased or it can be decreased when acidity increases acids increases acidity happens when bases increases it becomes alkalinizes okay so that imbalances we will see now they are not diseases actually but hyponatremia uh, fluid uh, hydration dehydration all considered as disease condition whereas this acid base imbalances is not disease conditions but they are the signs and symptoms which has happened because of any underlying causes of diseases okay so this is resulting from the various disorders but they are not disease by itself so here depending on the cause they are categorized as metabolic acidosis or alkalosis and respiratory acidosis or alkalosis so these four conditions or the imbalances disorders like metabolic acidosis or alkalosis respiratory acidosis or alkalosis alkalosis so from this name itself you can understand if the lungs fails to do its work then there will be respiratory acidosis or alkalosis caused if kidney fails to do its work then metabolic acidosis or alkalosis happens so now this is what here metabolic acidosis or alkalosis is caused by the imbalance production of acids and bases bases and excretion by kidney okay if anything problem happens in kidney there comes the metabolic acidosis or alkalosis second is i told you about respiratory acidosis or alkalosis which is caused caused by the problems of not excreting the carbon dioxide from the lungs so we will see uh, more further about this so the abnormalities first thing you have to keep in the mind is two kinds of abnormalities of acid base balance are there one is acidosis and the another one is alkalosis what is acidosis acidosis is something too much of acid or otherwise there is too little base base is less acid or more and that's why that condition is called as acidosis here the blood ph will be decreasing ph will be will go down and coming to the alkalosis here the blood has too much of base whereas too too little acid base is more acid is less here what happens it will increase the blood ph value okay now we will see about the disease conditions what is metabolic acidosis and what is respiratory acidosis uh, i already told you metabolic means you keep remember that there may be problem in kidney okay and if it is respiratory then there will be problem in lungs so if there is any problem in kidney it causes metabolic acidosis that is kidney is making the acids to get increased in the blood and thereby metabolic acidosis and respiratory acidosis as because lung is not excreting or exhaling the uh, ions that is acid ions properly outside and thereby respiratory acidosis is result okay so we will see here rise in hydrogen ion concentration in extracellular compartment will cause 
increased hydrogen ion or decreased bicarbonate ion okay hydrogen ion is increased and whereas bicarbonate ion is decreased so what happens here is acidic is increased and base is decreased and thereby there is a problem in uh, extra cellular fluid compartment which is increasing the blood ph here i told you already if it is acidosis the decrease of the ph level will be there okay so here the ph of the blood will be decreased so what is the causes here if a person is having too much of starvation or otherwise renal failure or shock and diarrhea so dehydration will be the most important cause where the acid levels are increasing whereas the base is going down and thereby the blood ph value is decreasing okay and that we call it as metabolic acidosis especially this metabolic acidosis will cause headache lethargy abnormal clumps and manage uh, flushed skin deep respiration and tachypnea will be uh, severe tachypnea means more amount of respiration will be respiratory rate will be increased what can be the management here so the underlying causes like kidney failure diarrhea shock and all has to be treated and thereby when the hydration is being uh, collected back or uh, we are getting back the amount of fluid volume uh, properly then that will be reducing the metabolic acidosis okay and here coming to the respiratory acidosis there is increased arterial carbon dioxide concentration and thereby carbonic acids are increased and hydrogen ions are increased okay hydrogen ions and carbonic acids which is a weaker acid and the strong acid this is a strong acid and this is a weaker acid both of them are increased in the arterial blood so what happens here this is caused because of the hypoventilation and caused by decreased ventilation and thereby cerebrospinal fluid and blood fluid everything becomes acidic okay that is the blood ph value decreases so this is caused because of the any respiratory problem or lung lung problem if the patient is having respiratory depression the patient who is not able to exhale properly then that patient will be resulting into respiratory acidosis so both of the condition is same only where in the kid, uh, in the metabolic acidosis the acids will be increased in the extracellular compartment and and decreases the ph value of the blood whereas in respiratory acidosis and that is because of the kidney problem here in the uh, respiratory acidosis arterial gas will be consisting of more carbon dioxide and because of that carbonic acid and hydrogen ions are increased and the lungs is failed and because of that it is not been exhaled outside and thereby respiratory acidosis now passing on to the metabolic alkalosis and respiratory alkalosis alkalosis means what i told you there will be too much of base and too little acid where the ph of blood will be increased so metabolic acid alkalosis again the ph value of the blood is increased because of kidney problem and here it is by the lung problem and you can read here because of heavy loss of acid from the body there will be bicarbonate level increases so bicarbonate is a weaker base so this is too much increased in the uh, body okay that is in the extracellular compartment this can be also happened by vomiting hypokalemia hypokalemia means what it is less potassium level in the body and because of gastric suctioning uses of steroids and diuretics kidney is excreting too much amount of phosphate and phosphate has been excreted so what happens there won't be binding of base with the phosphate phosphate has to be binded with the bicarbonates but that cannot happen so what happens bicarbonate ions uh, which is a basis or more increased in the extracellular fluid compartment as it is not excreted properly so because of that there will be headache irritability lethargy numbness and tingling muscle cramps and all will be there so to correct this you can go for iv fluids which will be correcting the excretion and thereby bicarbonates can be excreted by the kidney if the person is suffering from kidney failure and the another one is respiratory alkalosis is caused by the decreased carbon dioxide that is the lungs is taking too much of breath hyperventilation hyperventilation and because of that too much of carbon dioxide has been exhaled outside so what happens carbonic acid will be decreased and here also again hydrogen level is decreased and bicarbonate levels are increased okay so when 
bicarbonate levels are increased in the oxygen or in the lungs, what happens? There will be respiratory problem and hyperventilation is caused by that and there comes the respiratory alkalosis. What happens? There will be headache, dizziness, tachypnea, tingling sensation of the extremities. So, when such problems are coming, the nurses has to meet that to treating the underlying causes. If any lung deep exhalations, uh, more kind of respirations or hyperventilation is there, uh, give less kind of oxygen, keep them in uh, breathing pattern normally and thereby it reduces the respiratory alkalosis chances. Now coming to the summary, uh, from the beginning we are learning what is fluid, what is electrolytes, what is acid base balance, what are all the body physiology which will be balancing this fluid electrolyte and uh, acid base balances and then we taught about I taught you about uh, what happens if the imbalances happens is, or when the homeostasis goes wrong what happens in the body with the fluid and the electrolyte and the acid base balance and as a nurse how you should treat how you should identify how you should treat was the last classes we have seen so fluid electrolytes are the most important human body uh, to human body functions to make your body functions normally and if anything is increased or decreased in the amount of fluid or electrolyte or acid or base uh, will create imbalances and that will can produce diseases in the body. So as a student nurse, we must first have a thorough knowledge about all these uh, fluid, electrolyte and acid base and how it has been physiologically maintained, what is the common balancing uh, mechanisms which is happening and if this mechanism goes wrong, what happens is in the form of imbalances, if the equilibrium status is altered, what disease conditions or what manifestations the patients will be happening is what we wanted to learn as a Tarav knowledge. So when you have a Tarav knowledge, uh, when the clients comes to your, your hand, you can improve the health status by providing a proper management with fluid, electrolyte and acid base imbalances. So that's what we have learned till today. Hope you all you have understood very nicely and uh, Keep enjoying the classes. Thank you.